this next item I'm a little worried about. Can you tell me about it, but safely maybe? Yes. So this small and unassuming artifact actually has a huge history here in the city of Chicago and in um, the history of the world and in science and technology. So what this is, is a small piece of graphite from something called CP1 here at the University of Chicago. CP1 stands for Chicago Pile 1, which was the first artificial nuclear reactor ever built mm. in the world. And it was built on the University of Chicago campus only about one mile down the street here from the Museum of Science and Industry, as not I too far away. As I understand it, not just at the University of Chicago, but under the football stadium, Stag Field. Yeah, so it does say that here, Stag Field. It was built under the West bleachers of Stag Field. So, uh, and that was used as a squash court, and that was the only place they, that they could build something as big Big as needed to be for the Chicago Pile 1 nuclear reactor. And the person in charge for that was Enrico Fermi, Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, uh, who was in charge of the project. So um, this was all part of the Manhattan Project, World War II history, to try to build the first artificial nuclear reactor. And uh, they decided to do it here at the University of Chicago, and again, underneath the bleachers. And right now, if you go there, there are some plaques that mark that spot yeah. where the CP1 was built. And there's also a sculpture called Nuclear Energy that was sculpted by uh, Henry Moore, the famous sculptor that is uh, there as well. So graphite is carbon and they needed a bunch of these carbon bricks to kind of keep control over the uranium and the, the fission that was happening uh, with the uranium. Uh, and so it was used as, to protect it from, from becoming an uncontrollable reaction and going critical. But when they did the experiment on December 2nd, 1942, it's marked right here on this, it turned out to be successful. They did it in the afternoon. It took about an hour and a half. They were moving control rods in and out of this pile that was about 20 feet in height and about 20 feet at the widest part, and they were moving these um, carbon uh, 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 rods in and out to try to reach that criticality. And they did it successfully. They had the machines there that were measuring that um, uh, amounts of, uh, of fission that was happening, and um, they, they were successful. And that happened on that day in the afternoon, and then they all celebrated with a bottle of Chianti, which they signed, all of them who were in attendance, and that's the only way we know for sure who was present during this experiment because there were no photographs oh, yeah. taken at that time. Oh, well, certainly a top secret mission, and so it's also like the second top secret mission there. So Stagfield gives us, uh, <laughs> sadly, the atomic bomb, or infamously, rather. Yeah, But it also sure. gives us the forward pass because Amos Alonzo Stag invented the forward pass in football. Is so that right? That place is just full of history. Oh, wow. That's great. I like that. <laughs>